每年都来支持我们，而且不是他来而已，还的呃，就是。So our topic for this month will be on the uh on on the Department of Education. So we have the the uh the superintendent of the Cixi University in Huilin. And we can see her posters or her publications has been designed by the team in Huilin, as well as written and by the a、uh, team in in Zhanghua. And we're very grateful for her for giving us a feedback when she was here last time. And she said that even though her sharing was only thirty minutes. I、uh, may not be as long as she wanted, but she's able to still、uh, spread positive information to all those who are joining. Now, hopefully, she's able to feel a positive energy all the way in Huilin where she's at. And last year in January, this is her feedback when she. Was here in person. And at the same time, at the same time, if you'd like to follow and keep track of the Cixi University's、uh, updates, you're welcome to listen in at the Volunteer Assembly every Monday in Taiwan. Because that is usually dedicated to the university, and as you can see,、uh, as the award for the most sustainable university, Cixi University was、uh, ranked the 143rd in the world. So here you can see all the events and stories from the university. So if you're interested in that, feel free to join in the volunteer assembly every Monday morning. Now, if you'd like to know know a little more about our speaker today,、uh, we have a little clip for you. So. She is actually from Kaohsiung as well, and a lot of people、uh, may have heard of her but not seen her or know her personally. But、uh, she is very、uh, dedicated to serving the students as well as promoting the student rights. And as you can see, this clip is to、uh, showcase her her power of grace. Now, those you now you see where where I am right now, but I didn't come this way. And it's always a a process of growth and evolution to get to where I am right now. And one of the hardest things being a principal of such university is that you cannot say anything is difficult because our founder started such a foundation from nothing and created the four missions. Now, one of my best traits is to be optim is that I am very optimistic, even though I may face obstacles and difficulties after I wake up from. From my sleep, and I would feel completely energized. I don't complain much, and I take pride in everything I do and every position that I'm in part of. Now, from these clips, it's maybe short and not 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 very lengthy. But I have sent that to people multiple times. Every time I watch it, I still feel motivated and inspired from her story. Now I received a scholarship from this school、uh, to get my PhD. So when I was 
taking the the role as a principal, uh, it's to fulfill my responsibility. Okay, should be good. Just approve it. Okay. 就投稿了。对，就投稿了，就等。Let's talk about your new manuscript. 然后他现在还在写另外一篇。So this is how they were submitting publications. My son and I are in the United States. My son is in the United States. My son is in the United States. Um, my son is an entrepreneur, and I'm very grateful for my parents for not letting me worry about them. My kids have been very close to me, and we have a very, very limited time to be together. So we must take every opportunity we can to interact and grow. One of the professors asked me that if that if I haven't seen my son for a long time, how do I feel? And one day when I asked him, he said that he said he knows that I have three thousand six hundred kids to take care, so don't worry about, we don't worry about him. So I felt really, really touched, and because he he's demonstrating his maturity now, even though he's a kid, but he's still very supportive of my my job, my responsibility. I feel that I'm a very, very, a good wife, a very good mother. But I'm also a very, a very good dedicated scholar. So if you're motivated and put into put your efforts into it, you can definitely put your passion into your in your profession. I am Tsuji University Principal, Ingrid Liu. I started in 1993. It has been 28 years. This is my first job, and will be my last job. As you can see, this is what really touched me. This is my first job, and it's also my very last job. And as we can see, even with the turmoils in Ukraine,、um, we have seen that principal has made a connection with Ukrainians that、uh, are in the Tsuji University, and she has brought them to the Jinsi abode and have them be immersed in the in the、uh, cultural environment of Tsuji. And we really hope that through these interactions. Actions were able to grow their affinities even deeper. So today, the topic of our heart sharing、um, is something that we all know and very、uh, that is very important. As we all know, that one of the key traits of Alzheimer's disease is a memory loss. So how do we increase the functions of Of self regulation and reducing the inflammations, the factors, and we found that by doing so, the memory, functional memory of our lab rats have returned. So we all know that our principal is a good mother, a good professor, and a very dedicated scholar, and a very happy that. She is from Kaohsiung, and we felt really honored to have her join us, and very grateful for her to be joining us this time during the year. And today, she will give us an update on the Alzheimer research. As we all know, that she just recently published a research. And she's willing to share with us today. So before we begin, let's just say that we have positive energy, and really happy to have her to be here. Uh, dear teacher Mei Yun, and dear master, abode master, as well as the families across across the world and Kaohsiung study group. 
uh, our listeners. I hope you'll have a good day, a good morning. I'm very grateful and very happy that every year the study group has invited me back for the sharing and and to present some of our very little achievements、uh, throughout the year. And as we see, the study group team has been very, very dedicated, very passionate in creating the the stories, the the, the artwork. All that is just to share this information to to family members, to see families across the world. So hopefully, all you can see are are. A presentation. Okay. 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 OK， 可以了吗？的，好，有了哈。是，好。那么今天想跟呃线上读书会的 ，OK， now can see her her slides。So today, what I would like to share with everyone and to our brothers, sisters, as well as our city family across the world, is how do we prevent Alzheimer's disease? Now you don't think that such doing so is a very difficult thing, a very difficult topic, because I will try to explain it with the most simplest way I can, because this is a very important topic. Now I'm sure everyone has heard of Alzheimer's disease, because it is a degenerative memory disease loss, a memory disease.、Uh, there are two markers. Which is a alpha and alpha beta amyloid plaque, as well as neural fibrillary tangles. Now, these two proteins,、uh, through abnormal accumulation, can create some early signs of Alzheimer's disease. And some of the most common signs is that they we see、um, some of our elderly members starting to lose the sense of their direction or forgetting what they were doing. And some of them may feel a little nausea. So when Our、uh, our elderly families have complained to us that they would forget how to get home, or even though they've been walking the same path for decades or lost sense of direction. These are all signs that pointing to us that we should start paying attention to、uh, early signs of memory loss. Or we may notice them. That you know they may have bought something but forgot to brought, bring it home, or don't remember where they left they left their keys, or sometimes even where their what they ate for breakfast. So these signs, you know, let me confess, I I feel like I have all of these signs as well. But if such a thing happens too often, it is、uh, it is a sign to be aware of. Now, when coming as it starts to degenerate some more, we may notice that they have issues with judgment because we've seen some degeneration, we degenerate degeneration of their、uh, frontal lobe in their brain. So, as we know, a lot of elderly were scammed, and why were they so easily tricked? Well, that could be also due to their、uh, their reduction in judgment. We also may know that their change in their social behaviors. They could be they could used to be very active or very outgoing, but now we start to see them becoming more in a withdrawal state. 
or you see a change in their in their mood very frequently. All of such could be signs, uh, early signs of Alzheimer's. As we see in the with the advancement of medicine, uh, research on Alzheimer's disease has been more more prominent. And as people are getting getting older, we will see that every year there will be more than three hundred fifty thousand new cases of dementia a year globally. And ultimately, due to the degeneration, the mortality rate will also increase by thirty eight percent. So you can see from the diagram here on the left, uh, in a normal brain, you see a full cortex with a large hippocampus and healthy neurons. But in, in patients with degenerative brain, you see a reduction in the hippocampus and a reduction in the neural conduction. So we can see a neurofibrillary tangles starting to accumulate within the, the neurons, as well as uh, beta plaques. Now, with the improvement of imaging technology, we're able to visualize these changes in the brain of our patients. So if we have seen if you if you have a family member uh, who has Alzheimer, a lot of people will ask if such a condition is hereditary. Well, we can separate that Alzheimer into two two types. One is the late onset. One is the early onset. And those there are many factors to dementia. Alzheimer is just one of them. One of the most common one, but it's just one of them. In late onset dementia, usually it occurs around 65 years old, and majority of our patients are the late onset. So far, there hasn't been a indication of in, a genetic inheritance for late onset. So if we have any elderly family members with late onset dementia, uh, we won't. We don't need to be too worried about us inheriting the, that disease because it is typically related to diet and food. Those with a higher cholesterol or bad uh, fat metabolism uh, will typically have a higher Link, link. Now, the early onsets typically happened around 30 to 60 years old and represents a smaller piece, usually only 10% of all Alzheimer patients. Now, we so far that we have been able to trace three genetic uh, mutations to this disease. Now, even though we have identified them, but because of there are multiple mutations, detection has not been very successful. As we know, some of the some of these genes uh, they're located on different chromosomes. So if we see patients who have an extra you know, chromosome number twenty one, which typically which are the Down syndrome patients, they have a higher risk of early onset dementia, Alzheimer's. So next, I would like to play this video, uh, which shows a story on the early onset. So a lot of his brothers and sisters are doctors uh, overseas, and none of them believe that he would have Alzheimer's. So as we can see, life is truly you know, impermanent. Now, last year during Father's Day, uh, he has some outbursts, emotional outbursts in Taipei. So we had to forcefully send him to the hospital. Now, when it happened, he was actually strapped on the gurney and, and, and carted away on the ambulance to the hospital. Now, 
Thinking back, I'm st it still her pains me because she was yelling that she did nothing wrong. So why did you why did you strap me up and tie me up? But I just can't I I can't take care of it anymore. Our family has always been living adequate, so have my father's uh, disease has been a, a a huge impact to our family. A lot of us, uh, a lot of people who are in my age group, or even those who are older, may not have encountered these things, such as. Teaching my dad how to you know, do simple math, how to wear clothes, how to you know, shower, even wipe himself, and have never faced situations where your father just can't con communicate with you. Uh, he may have, he may take other people's things, and you have to teach him how to bring it back. So from a video clip, you can see this patient. Uh, he's is a a patient of early onset Alzheimer. He himself is a doctor, and his wife. Uh, we can see his his teacher, who is a. A uh, teacher in the Tsinghua University English Center. And even though she was a very accomplished teacher, a professor, um, she actually resigned when I took office because we started noticing that her wife, I mean her her husband, has. Uh, Emotional outbursts and mood swings. And their their kids were also students of our Tsiji University Medical School and currently working in the medical uh, in the hospitals in Tsiji. So, uh, as we know that having a patient with Alzheimer's um, is a it's a heavy burden, a heavy burden for all families. So she started the Dementia Care Association in Hualien, and to help company help uh, families cope. With the sudden changes. In the past 20 some years, uh, we have seen a lot of medications have gone into even phase three clinical trials, but unfortunately, many of those were failed the trial. Last year, we have seen uh, the clinical trial for abducanumab. And which failed the first trial in which failed the third trial in 2019, but was approved in 2021 in, in June of 2021. Now it was kind of controversial because only, FDA only approved it for for early dementia, and so far there is no significant evidence to support the degeneration of Alzheimer's. Secondly, it is very expensive. Uh, the use of this medication costs more than fifty-six thousand U.S. dollars a year. So early this year, FDA approved a new medication called lecanemab, which has help known to help reduce uh, cognitive disorders by 27%. The side effects including headaches, uh, visual impairments, even, even uh, loss of consciousness. And it is still very expensive medication 
And we have known that we cannot combine this with uh, stroke medications because it can cause significant uh, side effects or comorbidity. So the care for Alzheimer's patients uh, has been causing a significant burden in the society, both financially and resource-wise. And why is that? Because a lot of the current medication is about clearing the amyloid plaque. And as we have seen from this quote, clearing the alpha beta clack is like putting out a forest fire by blowing out a match. It is not, it's very difficult to remove the cause once the symptoms have already set, set in. So best option is to prevent and to help and do ways to prevent the accumulation. So now we're looking more into prevention of Alzheimer's disease. And one, one research has found that as we age, we, are, we notice the immune system will start to be less and less effective. As we all know, our immune system is very important in defending ourselves uh, against foreign, foreign bacteria, allergens, or foreign antigens. And that is when we create a situation called inflammation. Now, if there are abundance of antigens and we have too much pro protein depositions or accumulations, our body will, will be con chronically in a state of inflammation. So a, lo a lot of our internal organs, such as our liver, our kidneys, even our skin will have infl inflammatory responses, and that includes our brain. So if there is a continued inflammation, uh, we will see damages in our in our brain neurons. So now the latest strategy in preventing Alzheimer's disease it is to help target uh, inflammation responses, chronic inflammations. So if we have in early early on take care using medications that are anti-inflammation and that we may be able to prevent this issue. So now the research is more on finding compounds from nature, which has less of a side, which demonstrate less side effect that can help reduce the inflammation. Now, there are many causes of chronic inflammation. One such things include hypertension, high blood of blood lipids, cholesterol, as well as high blood sugar. So if you have any of these indicators, you should not be ignoring them. And you must have find ways to control these numbers. In 2004, February, Time have published on their cover that inflammation is a, a secret killer. If your body is constantly under the state of inflammation, not only there could be damages in our brain, it also increases our risk factors for heart attack, cancer, Alzheimer's, and other diseases. Now, what are some of the signs for chronic inflammation? Now, we may know that we have no seen rashes in our skin or itchiness. Sometimes when we're under stress or even we will notice these signs and also finding our joints be a little inflamed or our nose be itchy, our eyes. Uh, we, we have stuffy nose or chronic headaches. Uh, insomnia. We may also notice fat accumulations in our in our stomach, in our lower abdomen, as well 
as uh, if you have a sweet tooth or love fried or or uh, a roasted foods or even fast foods. So one of the way, one of the dietary methods of controlling chronic inflammation is to control our calorie intake. Masters have have taught us uh, for numerous years that to focus on a vegetarian diet and control our our calorie intake. If we only ate about 80% full, we are able to not only sustain ourselves, but also help more people, feed more people. Excessive calorie intake increases the fat synthesis within our body and create fat. Even those who are vegetarian, if you take in extra sugar or uh, fried foods, you can, can also increase your the fat accumulations, as well as if you have excessive uh, oxidants, oxi oxidative fatty acids in your in your body, and that will be a trigger for inflammation. It's also very important to note that we should use good oil, good type of oils to in our cooking and what we eat. A lot of people nowadays are you know, eating out. Even though it's convenient, uh, we see that these fact these uh, restaurants, in order to control their costs, they will be using oil, oil which are of a lesser quality, such as soybean oil, corn oil, uh, sunflower oil, which contains omega-6 fatty acids, and these are known to cause chronic inflammation. If we have oils from from nuts or cold-pressed olive oil, uh, inca berry oils, and they are rich in omega-9 to omega-3 fatty acids, which can help reduce infl inflammation. So best way is to to use good oil and cook ourselves, prepare our own meals, and help us from ingesting oils that are rich in omega six. At the same time, we have to eat more raw foods, uh, which means to help us not eating any highly processed foods. So in short, it means you need to eat foods that may that uh, made from ingredients that you can still identify. Uh, you can see from cabbages, from carrots, uh, vegetables. A lot of the highly processed foods can contain excess sugar and fat, which can trigger more inflammation. At the same time, we have to essentially eat the rainbow. We have to eat vegetables of many different colors. As we all know that colors are comes from photochemicals, which are antioxidants. In addition, uh, vitamin E, vitamin C, lecithin can help also reduce inflama inflammation activators and if kappa, a, kappa B. And when we're cooking, we have to help re help cook them in low temperatures using natural seasoning spices and avoid allergens. So if you know if you're allergic to to certain nuts or peanuts, um, keep yourself away from those. The most importantly is to have a minimum of twenty minutes of exercise a day. Research have already shown that by by exercising, we keep the balance of our sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system, as well as reducing the inflammation responses in our body and help maintain the cardiovascular system, the stability of our cardiovascular system. Our emotions play a very important part too. Having a positive energy and a, a stable emotions can help reduce inflammation. Studies have shown that 12 minutes of meditation or 12 minutes of calmness can help reduce early onset of dementia, 
as well as reducing our the the risk of uh, depression. So next, I'd like to play a little video here, uh, which is a summary. We're really having some issues with our sound. So our nervous system has the function of sending impulses. And you can see that there are uh, neurotransmitters and, and occurrence to send these impulses. In our nervous system, it, to be the cause of Alzheimer's disease, we can see that in our neurons, there are accumulations of that of the uh, neurofibrillary tactics. And between the neuron cells, there is accumulation of the amyloid protein. So it's like having backed up traffic in our, on our highways. And when everything is clogged up, these impulses cannot be transmitted and cause dementia, a memory loss, as well as instabilities in our emotions or our mood. In addition, clogging, the clogging of uh, the circulation system can also be a very, very important cause of dementia. So that's why we say it's very important to maintain and keep control of our our blood sugar, uh, lipid level, as well as our blood pressure. So if we see some of, if our, some of our, our parents or older family members having changes in their behavior or their mood, it could be early signs of dementia and we have to be attentive and seek medical help early on. To help prevent them, uh, we can not only including the the uh, factors, the, the ways we mentioned before, such as uh, avoiding highly processed foods, uh, eating colorful foods, as well as as uh, exercising. It's also very important to keep your mind stimulated. So, being a CG volunteer, as well as joining the online study group, these are all very good ways of preventing dementia and Alzheimer's disease. So in our lab, we have been trying really hard to find some natural compounds that can help reduce inflammatory responses and reverse the memory loss. This is from one of our PhD doc doctorates uh, from Thailand. I found that marine compounds can be able to help reduce memory, memory loss. And last night, we just have a, a, pub, a publication that was uh, accepted. It is a standardized herbal extract, which can help reverse a memory loss in in mice, and this is from another of our researchers from Thailand. And hopefully, in the future, we're able to to uh, produce these extracts, these compounds, and help reduce the effect of Alzheimer's disease on on the general public. Now, as we can see, there are many many. Uh, films or 
videos that portray the development of Alzheimer's disease. So if you're curious and want to know the impact that it may have on you and your loved ones, your family, you can feel free to, to uh, look into one of these videos. Now, this is a picture of our lab, our dedicated in the research of Alzheimer's disease. So above are my, are my sharings. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me, get in touch with me, and I'll try to my best to respond to you. So at the end, I hope you all a happy new year, and thank you for listening to me today. So very thankful for uh, the principal, Lou, for her sharing today. Um, these these videos, these movies that she recommended are all very, very good. And if you have opportunity, you should you should take a, watch that. As we, we there are so many real life cases and real life incidents where young people, even though they are looking very young, they were still suffering from dementia. And a lot of us may have thought that well, we may not have any any issues uh, with our blood blood pressure or blood sugar. So we may ignore uh, regular exams. So, so it is something that to keep in mind of, and we may need to adjust our lifestyles to match and help to combat these uh, blood pressure, blood sugar, and, and uh, lipid levels, cholesterol levels in our blood. As we hear, heard earlier in the sharing, that Alzheimer's is related to chronic inflammation as well as improper diet and having having a vegetarian diet and regular exercise, it will keep us strong and healthy living. So I just want to share with you some of the uh, feedbacks of one of our our listeners. Uh, she said that she's gonna take if she's gonna be on the plane that she won't be able to respond. But I kind of wonder if maybe she missed her flight because she was here responding with us online. And she shared that uh, she's that she that our speaker principal has been a a role model for modern modern day women who's able to take care of her family as well as maintaining a career and caring for an even bigger family at the city university. And through her sharing today, we have seen, we have gained an insight into Alzheimer's disease, and it was very grateful for this opportunity. And from our listeners, Victor and, and Janice, they were sharing that we're teaching us how to live a healthy lifestyle, as well as finding healthy ways to to benefit our society by being volunteers and interacting with other people. So from Beijing, uh, a lot of them are, are saying that they are noticing signs of a memory loss. And now we hope that it's not really the case for all of them. And, but at the end, we're all very grateful for them to join us today. And we hope to see her again next year. I'm very grateful for her for spending her precious time with us today. And now let's go back to our 